Hello everyone, welcome to today's interview. I am going to invite Mallory into our live. So I'm going to wait for her to show up. And as soon as I see her, I'll make her come. There she is. Um, let me see if I can invite you already. No, I can't invite you yet for some reason. Oh, but you're requesting. work um, no I think I have to do another version of it there you are okay so now, now we can turn off our zoom sound and I can launch this everywhere okay let me see let me see yes and, and I don't know, it's not working for some reason on Facebook. Let me see. Why is it not working? Well, as I'm setting up Facebook, we can already start to check in. Mallory, how are you doing? I'm doing well. Thank you so much for asking. Um, it's a beautiful day here, and I'm just happy that it's not so warm outside. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm not as happy as you because it's too warm outside. And um, so we're going to talk about um resetting about your experience resetting and about um what it's um what it's done for you um uh so where would you like to start can we start with um your beginning when did you start acting when did i start acting mm -hmm. oh i started acting when i was little um my sister actually acted before i did mm -hmm. and since i was your sister, I was mm -hmm. mm -hmm. <laughs> so I got in so many rehearsals, and I remember sitting in the back of a theater with my mom watching my sister on stage, mm. and I, I was so shy. I would not talk to anybody outside of my immediate family, mm -hmm. and I saw my sister rehearsing a show, and I turned to my mom and I said, "I want to do that." Oh wow! And she was like, "Like well, you won't sing in front of anybody. You won't talk to anybody. Yeah. I don't do this," and, and um. She put me in voice lessons and I just haven't stopped since I just wow. felt. Wow. Wow. That's so interesting, right? Because what is that? Can you explain the, the paradox of a child who's very shy and who at the same time wants to get on stage and be seen doing very vulnerable things? Yeah, it's... Um... I think initially what drew, drew me in was the the community aspect of it and seeing all these people around my sister mm. having fun and she, she was having so much fun but what i really liked about it was like i get to step into this other world so i think when mm. i was young more about i can be somebody else and i don't mm. have to die and, and then as i grew up and like once i got into high school and i was discovering more about like where do myself and like the characters that i like to portray meet and then like one of my bigger, I think, I don't want to say breakthrough, but like epiphanies, one of my bigger discoveries was when I really aligned with a character and I was like, I don't even feel like I'm somebody else. I just no. feel like I, and that was yeah. when I go march and little women. And I was like, I, I don't even, I don't have to do anything. It's effortless. I go on every night and I could do yeah. this. Yeah, that's wonderful, which is what it should always be, right? because you are not just your identity, your persona, your ego, you're human and you can connect with what, you know, human means. And I think what, what you're saying that's really interesting is like watching the community, the where you said the, the people around your sister and the possibility to get out of the little maybe cage or sensation that was making you feel constricted um, were the two, two things that um, that gave you the impulse to yeah to dare to be seen it's incredible yeah um, so then what happened can you tell us a little bit about how you you continued evolving until now yeah uh, so I did a whole bunch of community theaters in my little town of Carroll County, Maryland. Um, and I got to meet a whole bunch of different people. It really, really 
never became a question of am I going to do yeah. this or it was uh, this is what yeah. it is there's yeah. no option that's all there is yeah yeah <laughs> I was like do I go to college do I mm -hmm. not go to college do I just dive in um and luckily my my mom was has always been incredibly supportive of me and she was like no you should go to college which I'm very mm -hmm. glad because I, I learned even more about myself and about just acting in general um so I went and I got my degree mm -hmm. After that, it was 2019. <laughs> I graduated May of 2019. Mm -hmm. And I was starting to do some professional work and everything stopped. Um, yeah. And I, I, I like tried to keep reading. I tried to keep doing like a few things here and there. And I didn't realize how much I had lost touch with those muscles going to class every day and getting to explore these different things. So I was mm -hmm. like, nope, <laughs> we're jumping, we're diving back in. Um, so I just got back into auditioning and joining any local groups that I could and exploring any text, any role that I could. Mm -hmm. uh, and then this summer was the first summer in a while where I was, I didn't have anything planned. And I've been so lucky to have been consistently cast for two years mm -hmm. after the pandemic and like getting back into it. But, um, I was like, I'm tired. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm just tired. I don't find, I don't have to be in a show I don't need to be a part of something I'm exhausted hmm. and what do you think the exhaustion came from what what did it come from for me it's saying yes to everything mm -hmm. I'm trying to do everything um working behind the scenes working on the stage and just I think I was um I was scared because the pandemic stopped and I felt like I had such momentum after college and I was doing all these things and I was making all these relationships and then everything stopped and I felt like I was forgotten. And, mm -hmm. and once I could get my foot into any door, I said, yes, I'll do it mm -hmm. just so I can be seen. My name is out there just so I yeah. can feel like I'm a part of the industry again. Mm -hmm. um, and now oh, well, in, in May, I said, no, mm -hmm. I'm done. I'm so yeah. tired. So did your saying yes to everything also go all the way to, so it started with saying yes to any project, even the ones that you didn't want to do, but did it also go to the point where you would say yes about certain choices or certain ways of acting that weren't necessarily your heart's choice? Did you start to go into, yeah, pleasing and just accepting direction in a way that didn't have integrity with yourself? Yeah, um, I think I've been very lucky that I, I'm very, um, I say a, yes to a lot of things, but I also have through this time have become picky about who I work with. Mm -hmm. So I think where I ended up going was more of the people pleasing mm -hmm. in the sense of, I really like the people I would work with and they trusted me with my decisions and my understanding of the characters. Um, but I would just keep saying yes, because I was like, oh, I really like this person. I don't want them to get mad at me. I'm just going to keep on saying yes, yes so that I can make sure that they still like me. Um, like that, me, uh, yeah. Uh, not making the choices that I wanted to within mm -hmm. the casting yeah. given. Yeah. Yeah, and that I, I like the way you're describing this because in a way, this challenge that you're sharing is really universal. I think that the most actors so for you, it's inside of a specific circumstance where there was some steam and then it was lost by COVID and then you just wanted it all back. And so it kind of turned on those people pleasing buttons um, or those yes buttons at any cost. But I think for most actors, maybe without having had the circumstances that you've had, different circumstances make them land in the same place which is i'll do whatever mm. i'm at the audition and i'm even before getting there i'm trying to figure out what the casting director wants and um and therefore i kind of by not kind of i completely bypass myself my artist and what i'm actually here for and so you can't get to fulfillment when you're bypassing yourself and you're trying to do what the other person likes what you think they like and you do get to burn out because you're 
you're not supposed to live outside of yourself. <laughs> so the burnout is actually kind of a good thing because it tells you, hey, hey, this is not charging your, your batteries. When you're showing up this way in, in a way that's going to make everybody happy and you're bypassing yourself, you're, you're leaking all your energy. And if you keep doing that, you'll hit the wall. And um, a lot of people, I think, um, can get very close to the wall and never really realize what's happening. Mm -hmm. Think that it, it, it has to be this way because I have to get the job, so I have to please, I have to do it right. And I can't make the choice that I want to make in my heart. And they'll abandon themselves for the benefit of booking the part or pleasing the director or the casting director or whatever, not realizing that short term and long run, that is the straight line to the wall. Like it, it just doesn't work. Not just for not getting the credits long term, because you won't be able to actually deliver deep and truthful work, but also just for yourself. It just, it just won't work. You'll, then you'll, you'll feel terrible. Yeah. 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 I totally get that. So um, is that why you decided to reset? Did you think that that was the way to get back into yourself and to find your energy again? Yes, and especially I had started going to, I had just moved closer to DC where I am now. Mm -hmm. And I had started going back to all the, um, all the EPAs, the open calls. And it, <laughs> so um, I, I can't think of a better word besides dehumanizing, just mm -hmm. sitting there all day mm -hmm. and praying get seen and mm -hmm. then it just everything gets to swirl around your brain and then I would walk in and feel so generic yeah and not thing and very much so like you were saying like people pleasing mm -hmm. like please like whatever yeah. I yeah the casting director's not looking at me the director doesn't care all of those things um and so I had decided that I wanted to do some kind of acting class I wanted to get back in to working those muscles and having the time to really like dig in to acting again because I hadn't taken any, any acting specific classes mm -hmm. since I graduated. Um, mm -hmm. And I was looking around and I was trying to decide what I wanted to do, especially since I just moved out. So I was like, ah, yeah. Um, and one of the th things that really sparked in me when I had decided to reset was, I think you say it quite often, but I really like it, is that there's nothing that you need to learn. There's nothing yeah. else you need to know. And I was mm -hmm. like, yeah. There is nothing else I need to know. Mm -hmm. I did, I've done all this work. Yeah. I have all this stuff. Um, and I, I just, I had felt burnout. I felt generic. I had felt that anything I did wasn't good enough. Mm -hmm. And that's why I wanted to reset. Because I was like, I know there's something in me that is yeah. good. And I need, yeah. it needs to be able to come out. Yeah. Yeah. Wonderful. Wonderful. I'm so glad that we crossed paths. So what was the experience of resetting? How was that for you? It was really hard. It mm -hmm. was really good. It was really hard. Yeah. Um, I've ever shown up consistently for 33 mm -hmm. days in a row for something. Mm -hmm. I've done challenges where it's like 30 day challenges and I've given myself the weekend off because yeah. I'm like, oh, I've done whatever I get it mm -hmm. done. Um, but I knew if I wanted to make this investment and I really wanted to have transformational progress or anything I needed to show up and I needed to try um so some days I was so exhilarated I was so excited because there was things that I really enjoyed mm -hmm. and some days I showed up that I was didn't want to do it at yeah. all and I no matter what it is I'm gonna do it I'm yeah, gonna get to that and I'm gonna try I, and I even up to the last week when um I I we revisited some of our goals and things that we wanted to accomplish. And I was like, I'm not there. I, I it's been how, mm -hmm. however many days, 25 days, and I'm still not there. Mm -hmm. So I really threw it all in the last week. Mm -hmm. I said, you're going to do it mm -hmm. and you're going to go all the way because if you want transformation, then you have to do it. And mm -hmm. it wasn't the last week that wow. I, on my 33rd day, I was like, oh, oh, oh my God. <laughs> Oh but I knew it unless I went all in all the yeah. way. And it was just really wonderful um, to like be, be along with the people who are taking it actively at the same time as I was, yeah. but also along with the people in the class yeah. in it. Mm -hmm. um, and I feel like we all transformed. And I was like, yes, I want to be a part of 
this transformation and I'm very happy that I did it, but it was very hard. It, it is, it can be very challenging and it takes commitment and it takes um, like you, the words you use were, I went all in. And in a way I want to say, if you're in the business of acting, which is the art of being fully alive, in my opinion, um, there's no other option than all in. Because if you're not all in, you're not pre present. If you're not 100% doing what you're doing, means a part of you is not here. If a part of you is not here, you're, you're like the people who are going to perceive you or watch your work cannot get you, cannot feel you because you're actually not showing up. So the, it does really take commitment, going all in without knowing if it's going to work, but just throwing your hat and going, well, I'm, I don't know what's going to happen, but I'm just going to do it. And I think that says a lot about, you know, how an actor approaches a scene. Mm. And like, if you're, I, I love how Meryl Streep distinguishes a good actor and a great actor. She says the, the difference between the two is the great actor is ready to go out on a limb. So the great actor is the one who says, I don't know what's going to happen, but I'm just going to respect my heart. I'm just going to go all the way and I may fall and I may hate it, but I'm, I'm going to do it. Right. And that is where greatness, it's the only place where greatness can happen. Because if you're not going to go with all in, it means you're going to go with, I'm going to plan how this scene is going to go. I'm going to know everything that's going to happen in the scene. I'm going to plan it ahead of time. And therefore, when I'm in the scene, I'm not present. I'm just regurgitating something I decided before. So I'm not in the moment. I'm not really free and truthful. I'm just, I decided something will work and it will be good. And I'm just putting it there and I'm not taking any risk. And yeah. Yeah, you're not going to make any mistakes, but you're also not going to make any art whatsoever. So I think it does take um, in any art um, and in any reset, it does take someone to say, I'm, I'm just going to walk through that fire and, and do it no matter what, because yeah, it's, it's essential. Yeah. Um, so what is the, I know we wrote the title is that you woke up to yourself. Can you say a little more about that now post reset, what this feeling is? Yeah. Um, it's not like, a. I feel I'm awake and I'm happy and I'm a Disney princess. Yeah. It's, no. I can feel everything. And I can also not have the courage, but like really welcome the idea that I'm angry and I'm going to mm -hmm. go in angry. I'm sad and I'm going to let myself be sad. Yeah. It's really just, I feel awake to all the different things inside of me mm -hmm. rather than pushing them down or even just yeah. feeling like I'm riding on top of them. Yeah. That I can't get into them and that they shouldn't be there. I also just feel kind of like a weight has been lifted mm -hmm. off of me. I, I forget what it was, but I was just like, I can do it. I can do anything. Yeah. I can. I feel like I've been a little bit more outspoken since mm -hmm. I finished. They mm -hmm. just come out, out of my mouth and I'm like, well, mm -hmm. there yeah. it is. What is it? <laughs> it's true. Yeah. Um, and I just, anytime something really sticky starts coming up, I feel like I have the tools to walk through it mm -hmm. and to walk with it. And mm -hmm. I want to be there because I don't want to be generic yeah. and boring and everything is perfectly fine all the time because it's not. No. No, and I, no, you're alive. Yeah. Um, it, it just feels, it feels lighter and it feels like I feel connected to myself and I'm more happy with myself, mm -hmm. proud of myself yeah. because it was hard. Um, yeah. But I'm, I feel like I got a better sense of who I am, mm -hmm. what I want, mm -hmm. uh, and that I can walk with myself to these auditions and to these no's and to these rejections and be like, oh, okay. Yeah. It doesn't matter. No. Really like no, because you showed up. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And so you, no matter what, whether you get a yes or a no, you've charged your own batteries by being yourself. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. 
Is there, as a child actor, do you feel like there was um, a possibility for the education, like the more maybe traditional theatrical education that you got to not do something so you wouldn't lose this part of you or to actually do theatrical education a different way so that you wouldn't lose that part of you? That's a really good question. I feel like I was really, I was very lucky with the teachers that I had because none of them ever stopped down my ideas or my passion. Mm -hmm. um, but I guess it was almost more rigid and the more places that you go, we live by the same tendencies and ideas that this is the character <coughs> from you and then you have to find the pathway to them. You need to substitute mm -hmm. to them. You need to um, find your connections to them. Mm -hmm. I wish I would have learned earlier on that it's me mm -hmm. and that all the different pieces of me can mm -hmm. show up. Mm -hmm. I, I feel like there, there has to be a different way to get into. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. In short, what you're saying is in that traditional um, acting education, you kind of have to get you out of the way and then do some work to get to the other person. Whereas what we do is the opposite. We say, well, if I feel it, anyone feels it. It's all human. So I make it every single time. Yeah. 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 So there's nothing wrong with me, nothing to fix with me, nothing to change about me for any role. I can just show up. Yeah. Yeah. I really like, like that. I think there's like a, it's either a rumor or it's true, but especially mm -hmm. we'll see it, but I, I mostly studied this idea that like you go to college and they have to break you down mm -hmm. so then be reborn and mm -hmm. i just don't i that's always terrified me yeah. i luckily didn't feel that way at my school but it there is always a level of that like everything you've been taught since now has to get we have to get rid of it and whatever you think is wrong and mm -hmm. i will teach you the right way yeah and there's no way there's no me there's only your path with this character and with the next character is going to be different yeah, that's great. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you for sharing your, 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 your journey with this. Is there anything that you would like to add or to share? Well, I just want to thank you for having me and thank you for mm -hmm. this amazing journey. And I would say just what you've already said, which is walk through the fire, do mm -hmm. it, commit to you. It's the best investment I have ever made. Mm -hmm is to me to you um and just thank thank you so much joe i really really appreciate it oh thank you i i can receive that thank you so much i the only thing i need for me to play is people like you who want to play want to play with themselves so thank you yeah definitely um i get to do what i love to do which is to witness people come back home and wake up to themselves and that there's no better thing in my life so thank you. Um, I think I will remind our viewers that, what do we have? Because of the strike, we're helping people out um, in two different ways. Uh, if, if people want to reset during this downtime and during the summer we're doing, um, well, get in touch with us, send us a DM. I know we have two ways to help you out. One is a BOGO offer so that you would only pay half and then there's another way that you could be helped during the um, actually we were doing that support until the end of july so there's 10 days or so left if people want to get some support some financial aid if you need it because we can't help everyone and um i guess that's it that's it for me too it was a pleasure to um listen to your story thank you so much for sharing thank you mm -hmm. all right let me bye you guys bye bye I don't know.